Okay, so it is time for SI 508 restoration. <clears throat> so many uh, viewers asked for it. So last time I just did basically an optical overall. So I uh, restored the uh, the front of the amplifier and cleaned everything up and made everything, every switch is working again. Um, so now I've been using this amplifier for quite some time since COVID started and I was working from home more frequently. I thought I really need to have um, another system in my office space, so I took the SA508 together with the tuner out of the shelf um, and that became my office system. Um, so there are definitely some issues with some of the capacitors, um, um, what I noticed occasionally. Um, so it's definitely worthwhile to look into restoring this here further. Um, I always kind of uh, push that a bit back because I wasn't too much in the mood to looking at it as long as it's working. But now the, um, the source selector switch is stuck. It's no longer moving so I can't switch between the different sources and that's really annoying. Um, so I have no other option. Um, I have to take it apart. I have to look at the switch. And while at it, I will definitely also go for a recapping of this device. It's definitely worth it. Great amplifier, looks great. Uh, will retain its value for a long time. And I thought that's the opportunity to go about it. So let's do it. Okay, so we're having a little bit of a look inside. Um, so here are 8000 microfarad Nichicon caps, 42 volts. So I won't have these definitely in stock. Um, that's something that I would need to order. I um, haven't assessed what all the others are. It's quite dirty here inside, um, but again, I think it's not a big deal. Um, so I will order these so that we can replace these as well. And, and all the other little ones that we are having here on the circuit board. Um, and this switch is quite interesting. Okay, not sure how well you guys can see it, um, but that is my problem here. It's this switch. So it even has a gear. It is turning it, it, it's very difficult to turn it um, so what I will try is I will just spray some some contact cleaner lubrication into it let it sit for a moment and uh, let's see if I can move it easier then otherwise there's also nothing wrong with using some WD-40 so maybe that's something I'm doing first because it will dissolve any greasy um, um, liquids or anything inside here um, and, and liquef liquidify it again and then using the contact cleaner um, maybe that's that's a better way of doing it so let's go about it so here are the the parts that are actually moving I'm not so concerned about the gears here and of course the excess that we're having here that's something that we need to clean off I don't want to have that sitting on the circuit board forever but the thing will be taken apart completely anyway okay uh, move this a little bit spray some stuff in it again uh, get this all over the place here now of course Okay, so I got the switch working again. So what at the end helped was to spray some WD-40 here into the front, in front of the white gear. So that was definitely just a mechanical issue, just some, some old grease or something that got so sticky that I no longer was able to move the source switch. So I also sprayed some contact cleaner now here into the different pots. Um, some of them were a bit crackly um, and um, so that will definitely help with it. Um, so I will start now replacing uh, some of the capacitors um, and order these big ones here. And um, yeah, but that should not hold us back to already get started. There is like a service a door on the back of this amplifier. So when I open the back, I have easy access to the capacitors and I just go about them um, as I can. And um, yeah, let's see how far uh, we can get it today. Okay, so I decided to go with these two first. So let's start with this one. I'm also not sure if the circuit board has marked polarity for the capacitors on it. Well, I see here a little glass, so most likely it does. 
So the bigger ones are often glued onto the circuit board, so you might see here a little bit of brown stuff. So that's not a leakage of the capacitor, it's glue. Um, so it's unsoldered from the back and the, the capacitor is moving back and forth. Um, and sometimes um, it makes me really uh, worried that when, when I pull too hard on it that I might break actually the circuit board. So if possible, try to get under it a little bit with something sharp um, to, to cut through the glue a little bit. I think in this case we can probably just get it out when we wiggle it back and forth. Um, so I hope I can use this pliers to do this, have a better grip on it. And I can see the glue and how it is peeling off the circuit board right now. Okay, a little bit more. It's so glued so uh, so well onto the board, can't get it off. So with the help of this screwdriver and poking through the, through the glue, might be able to get it then. So it's incredibly difficult and I hate it. Okay, it's coming off. And here we go. So here we have that guy. And you guys can see the leftovers of the glue here. And of, of course the glue on the circuit board. So the next thing I want to do is I want to figure out what's actually the condition of this capacitor I just pulled out. I'm, I'm just curious. Um, so what I pulled out is just a 330 microfarad uh, 33 volt. Definitely have 330 microfarad in my in my box and probably 50 volt or something. So it's good to be a, to go a bit higher. And um, yeah, let's see what the what the tester says about this capacitor. Okay, so we have this guy on the on the tester now. So let's see what it says. So it says it's a capacitor at 312 microfarad an ESR of 0.18 ohm and 1.4% VLOS. I think the ESR is suspiciously low, I would say. And 312 is a bit out of spec, but it could be worse. So um, definitely, once we pull something out, we will replace it with something new. There's no value in leaving an old capacitor in there. Okay, and I put two new ones in there. So I was breaking a little bit too quick. I got 330 microfarad, 105 degrees. But what I didn't have um, are some that have um, a higher voltage. So these are 35 volt as well. So that's how they are looking. But these are low ESR ones. So that's that's added benefit. And uh, yeah, I thought that's that's good enough. So I keep using these. That's fine. And um, so we just replaced uh, the first uh, two capacitors and plenty of them to go. Hi guys, so here we are back at the SA508 restoration. Um, so we are still in uh, recapping it. So I, I had to order these two big guys here because obviously I did not have stock. Um, so the size um, that they that they got, which is um, 8,000 microfarad, that's something that is actually no more uh, manufactured. Um, and I had no other option than to get a different size. So after some research, and also given the fact that the tolerances are, especially back then, uh, were quite high, 20% easily. Um, I thought I'm fine with using um, 8200s. So I got these um, Kiemet 8200 microfarad capacitors. They have a good reputation. Um, and uh, we solder these one uh, into this amp instead of the old ones. I also had uh, replaced a 330 uh, microfarad uh, capacitor. Um, it's supposed to be 63 volt. Um, I can't remember what voltage I had left. It definitely wasn't the right one. And it was only running in it for like a couple of weeks. Uh, probably even less. And you can see it's bulging already. 
Um, so yeah, it was probably worth the experiment, but we probably I was pretty close to blow up um, for that one. So not really recommended. Um, so yeah, so we take these remaining ones out and replace them. Um, and there are a few more to go also. Um, some filter capacitors that are under this board here. Um, and uh, you can see one of them here. Um, so all these with small capacities. Um, and um, I will go through them as well. And they all uh, will be getting replaced. The solder joints of the old capacitors are easily located on the bottom of the circuit board. There are actually three pins, yes, not two pins, and it takes a bit of patience to unsolder them. They are big, and it takes also a bit of delicate work on the circuit board again to get rid of all these damn glue to be able to remove it without causing any damage. Okay, so I pulled this guy out. It was a bit of hard work to get that one out because the contacts are just a little bit bigger. They require a bit more soldering. Um, and this thing also got three pins. Uh, so I'll talk about this a bit more because the new ones, obviously, they only got two pins, but um, now we don't, we don't have to freak out yet. Um, so this is an 8,000 microfarad, 42 volt um, capacitor. Here we have an 8200 microfarad, 63 volt capacitor. Um, it's always good uh, to have a little bit room to the app uh, in, uh, with, with the voltage. Have a little bit higher voltage um, is always is a good thing. It should increase um, the um, um, longevity of the capacitor in this device. So that's really good. And here we got our 8000 microfarad Nichicon. So how good or how bad is it actually? And so I got I got a tester here and we we just hook that up to the tester and see how well does it actually do. So we only got actually two pins are only in use. This one is just, you know, to give it additional stability when, when you, you put them onto the circuit board. Um, and it's not doing anything um, and yeah, so these two is what what uh, what are actually in use okay so when I push the start button it will start to check it and tell us how much capacitance actually this capacitor has left and it tells us it's only a 1585 microfarad capacitor anymore um, so there's definitely um, yeah um, there's some good reasons to replace this one uh, it's no longer in a, in a really good shape, so it makes sense to, to take these out. So let's see how well the, the new Kemet uh, capacitor is, is doing its job. Um, and uh, and see if we can actually get it into the board. So from the mounting might be also a bit of a challenge. They are a bit more narrow here. Um, yeah, let's see what we can do or if we have to have to create something um, an adapter or something together. I don't know, but, but I will just just try my best and see if I can just fit it in straight away. But before we plug in the new ones, of course, we need to clean up a little bit. This is a good opportunity to clean the other part of the circuit board. The one in the left half of the picture we cleaned already when we replaced the small capacitors. And now it's time for this part of the circuit board. A soft brush from your art store is doing a pretty good job for this. And now with the help of some circuit board cleaner we're giving it a bit of a wet wash and get rid of all the dirt and grime.
we got a pretty nice end result and it was well worth it. Okay, until now we have given the new ones a benefit of a doubt, but we, we don't really know about the capacitance of these guys. So let's check how well they are with spec. Yeah, we are quite happy with that and now it's really time to plug them in. So it took me a bit of time to find the right bending for these capacitor legs to be able to fit them in. And here are three pictures that should it make it easier for you to replicate it if you own an SA508 and plan to replace these capacitors as well. And here we have our two pins and an empty hole we don't care about. We want to do a clean job, so let's clean the circuit board with a bit of IPA to get rid of the solder flux leftovers and everything else. And that's how it looks after the cleaning. And here we got the result of our hard work, these two boys sitting comfortably in their new home. Okay, so we're finally done with the SA508 restoration we replaced all the capacitors and the question of course is now did it make a difference? And the answer to that question is it made a huge difference. Um, the amplifier sounds so much better I almost couldn't believe it. Enjoying listening to music here now around my workspace a lot more than I actually did before. The biggest difference probably is in the bass compartment. The bass is so much richer and more energetic now and more precise than it has been before. You saw the difference um, in the capacitance between the, the big capacitors um, and uh, um, quite far from the original spec. Um, in the time where I was still waiting for the big capacitors to arrive and listening to the amplifier with already the smaller capacitors replaced, I also heard quite a difference uh, in, the, um, in the brilliance and in the highs of the amplifier. It sounded almost like a fog has been lifted and this already made a significant difference. So overall, I can really recommend to anyone, um, if you have an old amplifier, go through the time um, and, and through the effort and replace the capacitors. It absolutely does make sense. Okay guys, and that's already the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it and as usual, thanks for watching.